They say I'm not too well faced the truth But I am just too long in the tooth So I'm an OAB and we've been But I'm not yet quite gone to see I may be over the hill now that I have retired Fading away but I'm not yet expired Wiped out, run down, too old to say One foot in the grave Absolute limit that was. You wouldn't believe that anyone could pick their nose all the way through Dazzle's with moves, would you? Three and a half hours I had to sit next to that. It was always the right nostril, you never touched the left one. It was the one on my side. I think he was digging the channel tunnel. I think, come on, what's the matter? I'm really freezing out here. It won't turn. It's jammed again. Bloody thing! Joking, surely. Here, give it to you. I managed it this morning by jiggling it slightly to the. Little bugger. Turn for God's sake! 260 pounds we pay for this! For a complete set of new locks so secure even we can't get in! Good old yellow pages! <laughs> I'm never going to get anyone in to do anything ever again. Oh, oh, good buddy. Grab the hold of my lips. <laughs> stand there shaking it. There's always one last drip that you have to dab it with a sheet of toilet paper. It's one of those strange facts of life you can never work out. Did you say you would pick up the makings of that casserole for me this morning? Uh, oh, I suppose if I have to run the gauntlet again with that woman, the greengrocer, it seems to fancy me. When it keeps wrapping up my vegetables in a suggestive manner. Wrapping up your pot? Of course, so I'm afraid to go in there and ask for a parsnip. <laughs> From that last week, and find lipstick marks on the end of a spring onion. <laughs> well, what's that all about? What are you talking? You're talking about Millicent in the greengrocer's. Millicent Miles fancies you. God, she must be desperate. <laughs> I'm not imagining it. I can feel her mentally skinning my beetroot every time she looks at me. I mean, you would think that a woman of her age, but... I've just put all that oil on that. You know it stinks to high heaven. Stinks has nearly taken my eye out. Your life in your hands every time you blow your nose in this house. Oh, <laughs> Morning. Morning. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, uh, my tickets for Wembley Thursday night. Now, what's this? Surely not. That new pair of gloves I sent away for. Oh, in the name of sanity, what's this? Can't anyone get anything right anymore?
91. Uh, speaking. Yes? Oh, my God. What? Do, do they know what ward she's in or anything? All right. Bye. Just saw the top of it disappearing down the road in a truck. I mean, can you believe that? Can you actually believe that? Jean has had an accident. Oh, well, what a bad one. Last night, on her way back from her sister's in Blackpool, the car went off the road into a ditch. They've taken her off the charter as general, so... Um, oh. I'll meet you up there in my lunch hour, all right? Oh, hello. Don't worry, she's not as bad as she looks. Most of it's superficial. The main thing is this nasty crack all the way around her jaw, so I'm afraid she won't really be able to speak to you at all. Oh, really? Oh, dear. Oh, well, the spirits are very low. I think she could definitely do with some cheering up. Uh, uh, I don't suppose you know if you're out for Christmas or not. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, hang on, I've got a pen here. What's this? Commode? What? You mean you, you, you want to... Mm, yeah. oh, but just hang on a second then. was at first. It's like musical chairs in this place. Oh, oh read that. Read all these. Oh, I tell you what I did do up there. Guess what? On my very first day, I won first prize in a competition. In Louis Tussauds, you know, the big waxwork museum on the front? In Blackpool. Guess who bought the winning lottery tickets? So what did you win? Well, I had a choice of 500 pounds in cash. 500 pounds? Or, now don't laugh, the chance to have a waxwork made of myself, all properly modelled with casts and everything by one of their experts. Right! <laughs> <laughs> Which did you choose? And then, now can you believe this? Some bastard forces open the back door and waltzes away with our fridge. Well, I better be moving. I don't know what's happened to Margaret today, I'm sure. Oh, your favourite TV programme on this, Miss Darling, won't it? Let me just switch that on for you. <laughs> Those locks sorted out, actually. Mm, bad as the one on the back of my van, then. Someone had that off last week. It's the age we live in. Anyway, me darling, I've got your Maris Pipers out here. I won't be a tip. Oh, right, right. Uh, uh, are you still there? Hello? Yes. Right. And you got my address there? Yes. It's Victor Meldrew, care of Alcatraz. <laughs> no, 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 what are you doing? Hold on. Oh, no. right, Victor. Victor. Uh, 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 oh, I'm sorry. 
sorry if it's not one thing that's another with me this lately. Oh, don't worry. Oh, what with yesterday in the pub? The young girl went for my purse. Just stuck her hand under the table and grabbed hold of it. Poor old purse. Is he okay? <laughs> Your husband? I lost my husband five years ago. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, you weren't that close towards the end. Uh, I think you get a feeling, don't you, when something's there and when it isn't. Morning, Madison. You know the back door of your van's wide open? Mrs. Elsbury's boys are out there practicing drop kicks with an aubergine. Oh, they're not. Well, I'll love you and leave you then, Victor. <laughs> you can settle up with me next week. <laughs> what happened to this? You know, the thread in the middle section's broken. I think we'll have to get a new one. Oh, right. Well, perhaps we can have a look the next time we're all gone. <laughs> when did this arrive? Oh, yes, just after you went round the corner, half past ten. Have you opened it yet to have yeah. a look? I'm afraid I have, yes. And? <laughs> I'll go and see to the potatoes. <laughs> Six hours of just sitting here waiting. Well, I've had enough of this bloody caper now. Have you been wiping up the cheese grater with this again? <laughs> Five o'clock. It was obvious he wasn't coming. Rang up the shop. Oh, I'm sorry. He's gone home now. This is day off tomorrow. We'll give him up and daddy day off. Ready, locksmiths. Five <laughs> <laughs> fifty-five. We're all meeting at the station. Kick off seven thirty. This has just been fine. Give me time this afternoon to run one or two little errands. What sort of errands? <laughs> Mr. Laverick, of Laverick Locks and Boats for all your household security needs. Yeah? Ah, sorry to trouble you, my name's Meltrew. We've spoken several times on the phone about some work you did for me last Friday. Mr. Meltrew, how are you? I haven't forgotten you. I mean, we've had a few problems at the office this week. I can only apologise most sincerely. And I promise someone will be around first thing tomorrow morning on my absolute word of honour. Yes, well, I'm afraid I'm not really interested in your word of honour, Mr. Leverick. I waited in all day for you four times now, and to be honest, I'm not prepared to be pissed around any longer. <laughs> Bitches. If I were you, I'd keep this door shut before they get everywhere. <laughs> 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 Your wife will probably let you back in when she gets... Oh, no, I tell a lie. Didn't someone say that you lived on your own? Yes, of course they did. In that case, you'll very probably be wanting this back. Give me back that bloody key. I'm sorry. Oh, what, you mean you'd like it posted through the letterbox? Yes. Yes what? <laughs> yes. Right here, then. There we are. I put a first-class stamp on it. <laughs> so it should be with you first thing in the morning. Oh, and in the meantime, be very careful of that umbrella plant. They don't like a lot of water. <laughs> Anywhere. You'll be waiting there till doomsday. I know. I'm supposed to be catching a train at six. Let's see if we can squeeze you in the back then. Shouldn't take more than ten minutes. Oh, sorry about all this palaver. I'll get around to fixing it one of these days. If you can find a space between the collies, I'm sorry, I'm all a bit chocker at the moment. Yes, well, I don't think I'll be too bothered about that so long as I get there. Then, there you are. You get yourself comfy, Victor. I've got one quick call on the way. We'll have bags of time.
I see you managed to get that knock off then from the back door at last. Margaret? Margaret? said they needed the beds. Uh, naturally, I couldn't wait to get round here. Well, where is it? Ah, um, well, we put it in the spare room. Oh, I say, Victor, didn't I say things keep happening just lately? I mean, so sorry. A big trip to Wendy and everything. And it's all my fault. Yes. part of a month I've been dying for this moment and now I must have been out of my tiny mind to think that anyone would want this in their house other than to scare away the rats it's absolutely hideous very good likeness though <laughs> your smile and everything. Yes. Well, what day did the dustman come round here? Right here. I'll give you a ring sometime then. Good night, Margaret. I don't suppose I miss very much in the end. <laughs> so, you're going to leave me now, are you? All on my own? Sorry? Uh, yes, um, um, I thought I'd walk home and get some fresh air. <laughs> oh, I don't know. The scrapes we get into, the pair of us. I suppose we're very much alike, really, when it comes to it. <laughs> anyway, bedtime. Hmm? You're going to walk out on me. There's not much to stay up for. No. Hello, Margaret. It's Millicent from the Greengrocers. Victor's still not home yet. Oh, uh, no. He's in London with some friends for the football. I don't imagine he'll be... <laughs> How did you know that? Oh, well, I don't suppose there's any point in trying to keep it from you. I'm afraid your husband didn't actually go to London tonight. He's been here, at my place. I don't think I need to paint a picture, do I? Suffice to say, it was a lot more fun than football.
You're back early. <laughs> oh, yeah. Margaret, I can't believe what I've done. It was one of those stupid moments of weakness that... <sighs> Would you like to tell me about it? Not really. Tell me about it. <laughs> I locked that locksmith in his porch. What? I went round to see him, locked him in his porch, took the key away and posted it back to him. I suppose I must be cracking up altogether now. Locksmith? I'm talking about Millicent. I just had her on the phone telling me that you've been round at her house tonight. Oh, yeah, well, yes, I'm afraid she gave me a lift and the van was towed away, so I missed the train, so I ended up watching a match in her house on Sky. Well, what you been saying to you? Victor, look me in the eyes and tell me nothing happened between you and Millicent tonight. <laughs> nothing. nothing happened between us. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Margaret? Hello, Millicent. Oh, so what have you come to tell me? I suppose he's denied the whole thing. Well, of course. I mean, naturally, he's going to deny it. Naturally. Because it never happened. Never ha You're not telling me you believe him. That's right, Millicent. My God, he's got you well-trained. Oh, no. It's called trust, Millicent. You should try looking it up in the dictionary sometime. It's next to trollop. <laughs> so I imagined the whole thing, did I? That your husband came upstairs and got into bed with me tonight. Imagined? No. Invented. Because, unfortunately, the evening didn't quite go the way you planned, did it? The way I planned? <laughs> the one thing I never took you for, Margaret, was gullible. I mean, I really thought you were stronger than that. Yes. Well, we'll see, won't we? Just how strong I am. <laughs> and in future, we'll be getting our potatoes from Sainsbury's. <laughs> people are sometimes. Suppose I should have known I was dicing with death there from the word go. How's your stomach? Yes, much better than it was when I was being sick in her bathroom. An hour and a half in the back of that van with all those rotting onions and then all those brandies. So wonder I get any stomach left. <laughs> Still, I suppose it all says quite a lot about us when you think about it. I mean, there aren't many wives who forgive me for going round to her house in the first place, even just to watch football. Wouldn't they? I mean, at least we're a bit more mature than that. Yes. <laughs> they say I might as well face the truth, but I am just too wrong in the truth. I started to deteriorate And now I've passed my upsell by date Oh, I am no spring chicken, it's true I have to pop my teeth into chew And my old knees have started to knock I've just got too many miles on the clock So I'm a wrinkly, creepy, set in my ways It's true that my body has seen better days But give me half a chance and I can still misbehave one foot in the grave One foot in the grave One foot in the grave They say I might as well face the truth But I am just too long in the tooth So I'm an OAB and we need But I'm not yet quite gone to see be over the hill now that I have retired Fading away, but I'm not yet expired Clapped out, run down, too old to say One foot in the grave 
the absolute limit that was. You wouldn't believe that anyone could speak their nose all the way through Johnson's with Moose Whitcomb. Three and a half hours I had to sit next to that. And what was the right nostril? He never touched the left one. What was the one on my side? I think he was digging the channel tunnel. Come on, what's the matter? I'm ready freezing out here. It won't turn. It's jammed again, bloody thing. Joking, surely. Here, give it to you. I managed it this morning by digging it slightly to the. Big old bugger. Turn for God's sake. 260 pounds we paid for this. A complete set of new locks so secure even we can't get in. <laughs> Good old yellow pages. <laughs> Yes, if you would, it would be a big help. 